okay, let me impress you by how I can do all those electron configurations in my head by just looking at the periodic table. Not just electron dot notations, which I already did. That was impressive enough. But no, even the 1s2, 2s2, and the orbital configurations, I can figure, I can, I know where they are based on where they are in the periodic table. I know what they look like, believe it or not. And you can too. This is why we can shorten this up a little bit. We're going to what's called the shorthand notation. I can tell you without looking, the last thing I'm going to write for germanium is going to be 4p2. I can tell you without looking, the last thing I'm going to write for magnesium will be 3s2. For cesium, 6s1. For, nit for nitrogen, which we did a minute ago, 2p3. How am I able to do that? You're awesome. I'm awesome. Yes, that's true. You've, you've hit on it. But in addition to that, my dog thinks I'm awesome. I'll tell you that right now. He follows me around. But in addition to that, there's a good reason I could do this. It's a trick, again. Okay? Periodic tables arrange this way for a reason. Okay? Everything in here, aside from, we already learned one thing. We learned one thing. The Roman numerals tell us how many outer shell electrons he has. But now, it turns out, I could tell a lot more by what row and what block these guys are in. I can break these down into four blocks. Okay, I want you to look at this. Let's, let's look at it to make it a little bit easier. Let's look at a, a generic um, periodic table. Oops, on the wrong spot here. Sorry. Uh, thank you. Let me look at a generic periodic table. All right, like that. I can break him down into four blocks. I'm going to color them in here as you see. Okay. This block here, this block in the middle, which we're going to talk about, people have been asking, what do we do with those guys? We'll get to that. This one over here, and then, of course, this one down here. Look at the colors. And they all correspond to, here's a surprise, how many long, how many elements long is this first block? Just two. This guy happens to be 10. This guy is 6, and this guy is 14. What does that correspond to? The number of electrons in the shapes. The number of electrons in each of those shapes. Look at it. This is the S block, this is the D, this is the P, and this is the F. And that's how you can tell what the last thing is to write. All right? A minute ago I told you, the last thing, I just said nitrogen. I think he's right here. I said the last thing we would, be right, we would write would be 2P3, because he's 2, 3, 4. Where do those numbers come from, the ones in the front? What row they're in? 1, 2, 3. You know what that tells me? It tells me the highest energy level. So I simply count down. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. If i got a guy down here, he's in the seventh energy level. Highest thing, last thing you're going to write is going to be 7S1 for this guy, who is Francium, right over there. Okay, if I go back, there he is. Okay. Um, last thing I would write for phosphorus, 1, 2, third row down, right? Third row down, 1, 2, third one over. And what block is he in? P. So third row down, three. That's the first number. The first number that's written is the energy level. Remember that it corresponds to it. Remember we were saying 1s. I said to keep that in mind last period. 1s2. With a blank underneath it, like that. I said the s corresponds to the shape. The blank corresponds to the position. And I didn't say this, but I'm telling you now, you should know this, the 1 or the 2 or the 3 in front corresponds to the energy level. And I know the highest energy level by just counting down. Potassium, fourth one down. Highest energy level is going to be four. What's the next letter I'm going to write for him? Where is that potassium? It's in the S block, 4S, right? How many, how many over is he in that, for, in that block? He's the first one. So the last thing I would write for, for potassium would be 4S1. Okay? 4S1 will be right here. 4S2. Now, some of you are noticing, and the reason I saved this guy for last anyway, is things get a little bit, they, get, they drop by one when you get to the middle here. Even though this is the fourth row down, this block here, all right, is actually in the third energy. Because the reason for that happens, remember what happens after the three P fills on my diagonal rule. Here's the diagonal rule. Here's my three P. After the three P comes the four S, then the three D goes back and fills up. And you can kind of read it that way. That's how it fills, like this, going across. All right, after the 3P, then the 4S, then the 3D, then the 4P, okay, and so on. 
So let's see if we can practice this and see if you can tell me the last thing you would write. This would be a good way to check your answers to the test. We'll go back to the periodic table here. All right? What's the last thing I would write for magnesium? Raise your hand when you think you got it. Last thing I would write for magnesium. And you will get this as I do examples of this. What do you think? Last thing I would write for magnesium, Jackson? Three S two, he says. Three S two is correct. It's the one, two, third row down. That's where the three comes from. Third row. Okay, down. S block. This is the S block. Three S. How many over is he in the S block? Two. Three S two. What's the last thing I would write for germanium? Last thing I would write for germanium, Matt. Fourth one down. No, uh -uh. this is not the D block. This this block here is six long. That's how you can, you remember again. There's a lot of hints along the way. This is six long. That's how you remember it's the P block. This is only two long. That's how you remember this is the S block. What block does this have to be? The D because it's ten long. Why does that make a difference? How do you know two, six, ten? Because one position in space holds two electrons. Three positions hold six. Five positions hold 10, and this one 14. Anyway, so back to, where was I? Germanium? 4? Four. 4P, not squared. Don't say that. This is not a cube. This is not a mathematical function. Just 4P2 would be correct. 4P2. All right? Let's try a couple more. Let's try a guy. Let's erase these now so I'm confused. A guy who's in the middle here. It kind of gets confusing. Let's try this guy. Niobium. What would he have to be? Now be careful. This is the one where you actually have to subtract an energy level. Right? So it's not going to be 5. Spencer? 4D3. 4D3 is correct. Even though he's in the fifth one, in the middle here, you have to remember, they're actually falling one behind every time. Okay? 4, the D block starts here. He's the one, two, third one over. That's where the 3 comes from. The D comes from the fact that he's in the D block. I can finish these up just like that. That's how I know. I can check any lands, not just the big ones. Now, how is this going to help me with the big ones? Well, it's going to help me because we're going to learn how to do something called a shorthand notation, where I don't have to write out all 74 electrons for tungsten, which I, I asked you to do. Okay? I'm not going to ask. That's why I said don't do that one if you get to it. All right? We're actually going to have to write out some electrons, but not all 74. Okay? And I'll show you how. All right? So these are your new notes here for the new school. Shorthand notation. And I'll give you some new example, new problems to do, and some problems in the book, too, after this. All right. When you're doing the shorthand notation, here's what you want to do. Find the nearest group 8 element. The nearest element that's in the far right of the periodic table. Let me go back here and show you what I mean. These guys right here. They have a special name, actually. They're called the noble gases. We're going to learn that in the next chapter. Okay, these guys right here. Find the nearest one to him who comes before the guy you want to do. And that way, like say, for example... I want to do uh, potassium. I would choose argon. I choose argon, so everybody that came, all those elements that came, all those electrons that came before, I don't have to write them out. I'll just write argon. And I'll assume that you know what I mean by just writing argon down there. So I only have to take care of the element, the electrons that come after argon. The first 18 are taken care of. If I'm doing potassium, I'll only have to write one arrow. I only have to write one, all right? Because the first 18 were taken care of by ju me just writing this down. All I'll write down will be this. That's it. That'll take care of the first 18 electrons. I won't have to write those out. So that will save you. When we're doing tungsten in a minute, number W here. When we're doing W, what element are you going to choose for your nearest group 8 element that comes before him? Okay, let's take a look. Here's tungsten, here's W. Nearest group 8 element that comes before him would be xenon. See it? 
So I won't have to write out those 54 electrons. It'll save me a lot of time. All right, so that's your first step. Find the nearest group 8 element, the nearest noble gas, with fewer electrons than the guy you want to do. And then you just complete the rest of the notation from that point on. Complete the rest of the notation after that. That's all you got to do. So, we're going to use this basic idea to be able to finish the rest of that notation. The colors and the different blocks are going to tell us where we're going to continue from. So, say, say for example, I choose as my nearest noble gas, you know, I choose the guy at the very end of this one. Um, okay, this is the fourth row down, one, two, three, fourth row. So, that would be krypton. That's got 36 electrons. Okay? I'll know the next thing. I took care of the first 36 electrons. The next thing that's going to fill off of that will be the 5s. All right? So that's, this kind of helps to, to, be, to pick up where I left off. All right? A lot of times people will write down the nearest noble gas and then start at 1 again. Well, that's kind of wasting your time, isn't it? If you start at 1s again, that's a, that's a waste of time. You took care of everybody that came before that. All of these guys, I don't have to write those electrons out if I choose krypton with 36 electrons. All I have to do is continue. Say I've got a guy that's down here. Well, then I've got to write those electrons out. Just these I have to write out. So let's practice that with a couple of examples. You ready? Now I'll come back to the periodic table here to be able to pick one. The first one I'm going to choose as my example is going to be strontium. It'll be really easy. Oops. I want to get a free board here. Hold on. So my first example underneath this is strontium. Okay. Strontium has, take a look over there, 38 electrons. And I believe, yeah, I already asked you how to do it. So if you were to do strontium the shorthand way, the way I'm sh showing you now, you just did them the long way, okay, you would have to write out 38 electrons the long way. Watch how I could do strontium the shorthand way. Who's the nearest noble gas to strontium? Let's take a look. Here he is. Nearest noble gas? Krypton, right? And it's nice because krypton has 36 electrons. I don't have to write out those first 36 electrons. Okay, let's go back to them. So I would write out just krypton. And that takes care of the first 36. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm okay with you writing down underneath how many electrons you've taken care of. Because that will make it easier to count them up later. 36 electrons. Now, strontium has 38. Where do the next ones go? Yeah, and the way you know they go into the 5s, let's just figure this out. What's the last thing you would have written for krypton? What's the last thing you would have written for krypton? One, two, three, fourth row down, right? P block. So the last thing you would have filled up would have been the 4p. All agree? Now, look at the diagonal rule over here. What comes after the 4p? So you don't have to memorize it. You don't have to memorize that periodic table, although you can figure it out. The next one that will come after will be 5s. You see it? Or you could just know it by knowing where he is in the periodic table. All right? So, 5s. How many do I need? I only need two because I need 38 total. That is all you would need to write for strontium. You can see how that will make our life a lot easier okay, when you get to do the longer ones. Let's do a couple more. Try arsenic. And I told you I would get to electron dot notations, and I will. Let's try arsenic. Okay. 
As, which in the periodic table is number 33, he has 33 electrons. Everybody agree? Good. Who's the nearest noble gas? You guys try this one on your own. Find the nearest noble gas, find the nearest group A element, write him down with the number of electrons he takes care of, and then continue from there and see if you do it right. Okay, there's our stick. That's the guy I want to do. <coughs> Who's the nearest noble gas to our stick? Haley, who'd you pick? Argon. Everybody agree it's argon over there? Right? So you write down argon. I'll do that. And he has how many total electrons? I want to write that down underneath. 18, right? So that takes care of your first 18. Where are the next ones going to go? It's the thing you're going to write after those first 18 electrons. What am I going to write next? That's the big question. People get confused on that. 4S. Does everybody agree why it's 4S? All right, 4S2. Let me show you. For those people who don't know why it's 4S2, let me show you. I can look at it two ways. I can look at the periodic table itself. And take a look at the periodic table itself. Here's my arsenic. Oh, uh, how did I get? How did I get moved? I think I went to the wrong periodic table. Yeah. Hold on. Must be this one down here. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Here's my arsenic. Here's my argon. Last thing I wrote these 18 electrons. So what's going to fill up after that? Right here. Right. 1, 2, 3, 4, S, 2. Then i got to take care of these guys. How many will they be there? After the 4 S fills, what are you going to fill? You can think of it two ways. 1, 2, 3, 4 go down, but the D subtract 1. Or you can just look. What comes after the 4 S? On the diagonal rule, what comes after the 4 S? 3 D. Okay? So, and then after the 3 D fills, again, it'll be 1, 2, 3, 4 row down, P block, okay, 3 over. So, let's finish this guy up. After the 4S, 3D. How many blanks go underneath the D? Five. One, two, three, four, five. And I need all of these to be filled up. I am going somewhere with this, too. I'm also going to do some more guys in the Ds in a minute. And finally, after the 4, 3D fills, and again, you don't have to keep looking back at the periodic table. You can just use the diagonal rule, because you're going to write that down on the top of your paper anyway. 4S, 3D, diagonal rule says after the 3D comes, 4P, right? 4P gets how many block blanks? 3. At this point, you got to start counting. i got 30 total at this point, up to and including these. How many more do I need? I'm doing arsenic, right? I need three more. They, Hun's rule says they go in one at a time before they go back and pair up. Pair up. Oh, that's a 3 up there. Okay? And that's what he should look like. Now, I said I want to do one more. And I'm going to use this one to illustrate what happens when you get guys in the middle and you draw the electron dot notations for them. Okay, watch. All right, so let's try the guy, another one from your homework. You know, I don't often go over homework that you do in the, from the book or stuff that's on the board up there for two reasons. One, the answers are, for the odd numbers, in the back of the chapter anyway. All right, but two, I generally go over them as part of my notes anyway. When I'm, I'm generally, not, I don't just cover something one time. So, this is another one I'm going over. I already did strontium. 
We already did, uh, we're going to do um, right now vanadium. And I started you on tungsten a second ago. That's the last one you have to do. Let's do vanadium, V. I told you, or some of you had the question immediately, well, what do I do for the electron dot notation for that guy? Well, let's see. Vanadium has um, 23 electrons. I gotta take care of 23 electrons for vanadium. Let's kill two birds with one stone. We'll use the shorthand notation to draw out the uh, orbitals, the electrons, the arrows, and then we'll do the electron dot notation too. Okay? So we'll do both. Vanadium, 23 electrons, nearest noble gas. Once again, if we look over here, here he is. Here's vanadium. Right now, here's vanadium. <laughs> Right there. I should erase those other guys. So here, right there is vanadium. Nearest noble gas to vanadium, I hope you all see, is argon. Right? Everybody agree? Okay, so I'll write down argon. AR. I'll put brackets around him, and I'll put how many argon has, which is 18. We've used argon a couple of times. Now, what fills after argon filled? Everybody agrees to 4x. Now this time I only need to get to 23. Two electrons. There you have it. I only need to get to 23. I'm already at 20. Where are the next ones going to go? If you look at the diagonal rule, after the 4x fills, the 3d fills. So I put 3d, and I draw 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 blanks, and I put them in one at a time. And that is the answer to the orbital notation using shorthand notation. What will my electron dot notation look like? That's the question now. People had that question on Thursday, had it at the beginning of the last class, and here we, here's the answer to the question. The electron dot notation only includes the outermost energy level. What's, everybody get an answer for this. What's the outermost energy level for this guy? What's the highest energy level I've written down there? What's the answer to that question? It is not what you're thinking. If some of you, I can see. It is not 3D. 3D is the last thing you wrote. But he's not the highest energy level, is he? What's the highest energy level? The energy levels are, are indicated by these numbers. Four. This guy here is the highest energy level, isn't he? So what does vanadium look like? He has two dots to his right. So what about these three? Are they in the outermost shell? No. Let me ask you this. The guy after vanadium is chromium. Chromium would look like this. Wouldn't it? Right? And the guy after chromium is manganese. And he would look like this. I would change this number to a 4 or to a 5 or to a 6 or to a 7. Would it change how many dots go to the side of them? So what does everybody who is in the middle here have, basically, for his electron dot notation? Two dots. Two dots. Now, it's not really true. There are some strange cases. It happens around um, the edges here, around silver, and uh, it happens again in the middle here, around chromium, where these guys actually uh, tend to do some weird stuff. But I'm not going to make you know that. All right? for your, as far as you're concerned, these guys all have two dots for the electron dot notation. All right. Silver does it. He does a weird thing. And so does chromium. Um, some strange things go on, but I'm not going to make you know that. As far as you're concerned, everybody in there is going to look like this. Oop, black. Two dots. Whatever they are. Okay? And by the way, if you notice, I haven't done a heck of a lot with these guys down here. It's because I won't. All right? We just aren't going to work with uh, elements in the lanthanide, actinide series. We'll talk about them a little bit in the periodic table chapter, which is next. But I'm not going to use, they will not be on the test. I'm not going to ask you to do these guys on the test. Okay? For two reasons. One, they're going to take so long, it's not worth it. I don't need to test how well you can write arrows. If you have to write 100 and some arrows, that's crazy. All right? Um, and also, number two is, almost none of these are you going to use throughout this year. These are all, a lot of these are radioactive, we don't have them, all right, and we're not going to talk about them until the chapter on um, nuclear, which we will do at the end of the year. All right, so, your new homework now, I'm going to put on some new ones on the board, as well as...